to make people laugh. That's all he wanted out of this world. He was a real happy guy. tell you about this clown. He used to raise a sweat every night out on that stage and just wouldn't stop. That's how hard he worked. He was trying to make people laugh. He used to have this cute little gimmick where he had a seal follow him up and down a stepladder, blowing Columbia the gem of the ocean on a B-flat Sears Roebuck model 1322A plastic bugle, a real cute act. But they didn't laugh. Ah, oh, you know, a few little things here and there, but not really, not really. And he was booking out in all these tank towns, playing the Rotary Club and the Kiwanis Club and the American Legion Hall. And he just wasn't making it. And he had all these wonderful things going on inside of him, all these greens and yellows and all these oranges. He's a real happy guy. And all he wanted to do was to make people laugh. That's all he wanted out of this world was to make people laugh. And then something began to grow. Something that just wasn't good began to grow inside of this guy. Funny thing. It's something that began to trouble this clown. You know, little things. Little things, once in a while, would happen that would make that crowd begin to move. But they were never the right things. Like, for example, the time the seal got sick on the stage, all over the stage, the crowd just, just broke up, you know? Little things like that. And they weren't supposed to be in the act, and they weren't supposed to be funny. This began to trouble them, and to bother them. This little thing began to grow inside. All those greens and all those oranges, all those yellows, they just weren't as bright as they used to be. And all he wanted to do was to make that crowd laugh. That's all he wanted to do. There was this one night in Dubuque when he was playing this Rotary Club. All these dentists and all these druggists, all these postmen sitting around, and they were a real cold bunch. Nothing was happening. He was leaving the stage when he stumbled over his ladder and fell flat on his face, just flat on his face. And he stands up, he's got this bloody nose, he looks out at the crowd, and that crowd is just rolling on the floor. He's just knocked them flat out. This begins to trouble him even more. And he begins to see something. He begins to see something.
about here, things began to change, but really change. Not the least of which our clown changed his act. Bought himself a set of football pads, a yellow helmet with red stripes. Hired a girl who dropped a five pound sack of flour on his head every night from maybe 20 feet up. Oh man, what a bit. That just broke him up every night. But not like the buke. And all those colors, all those yellows, all those reds, all those oranges, a lot of gray in there now, a lot of blue. And all he wanted to do was to make this crowd laugh. That's all he wanted out of this world. They were laughing all right. Not like Dubuque, but they were laughing. And the dough started to come in. He was playing the big towns, Chicago, Detroit. And then it was Pittsburgh one night. Real fine town, Pittsburgh, you know. About three quarters way through his act, a rope broke. Down came the backdrop, right on the back of the neck. And he went flat. And something broke. This was it. It hurt way down deep inside. He tried to get up. He looked out at the audience. And you, sh man, you should have, you should have seen that crowd. It was rolling in the aisle. This was bigger than Dubuque. This was bigger than Dubuque. He really had him going. But this was it. This was the last one. This was the last one. Yeah. This was the last one. He knew now. Man, he really knew now. But it was too late. And all he wanted was to make this crowd laugh. Well, they were laughing. But now he knew. That was the end of the clown. And you should have seen the bookings coming. Man, his agent was on the phone for 24 hours. The Palladium. MCA. William Morris. But it was too late. He really knew now. He really knew. He really knew now. William Morris sends regrets.